Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Professor Tomer Bashar. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this kind introduction and uh, it's a pleasure to be here back at LITS and addressing this distinguished uh, group. And uh, I, in coming up with the title and contents of my talk here today, I looked at the, the LITS website and there are four areas, major areas, that are listed as of interest to faculty and faculty are doing research in. And one of them was optimization and game theory. Another one was systems control and automation. Another one was networks, all the way from communications to social networks. And yet another one was machine learning. So here I have picked a, a topic and a theme which actually touches upon all these four elements. Of course, to the extent that you can fit within one hour or 50 minutes. And uh, so I hope at least those of you who are not control theorists or game theorists and so on will get something out of the talk. So here's the outline. I'll uh, give a general introduction to multi-agent dynamical systems. And I'm going, and this is, should come as no surprise to you that uh, I'm going to say that the framework of stochastic dynamic games is the appropriate one uh, to formulate such problems. And I'll talk about the underlying challenges which arise due to informational asymmetry, which arises very naturally in multi-agent systems. And then I'll uh, move on to resolve some of these challenges uh, to uh, mean field games, uh, which alleviates uh, some of these challenges. And this is, uh, these are games which are formulated in the high population regime, where you have a large number of uh, players or agents, and, uh, and there is an associated solution concept of mean field equilibrium in that, in, the, in that framework. I'll talk about computation of mean field equilibrium and uh, uh, along with some learning schemes, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll touch upon the, some zero order stochastic approximation based RL, reinforcement learning, and, and finite sample guarantees. And then, as time allows, I'll illustrate all this through multi-population linear quadratic mean field games, uh, which involve, so you can view that as a social networking problem, uh, which involve uh, both consensus and dissensus, and, and particularly relevant to the political arena we are in today. And then I'll just uh, summarize and then uh, talk about what lies in the, in the future. So multi-agent dynamical systems, I mean, you're all working <laughs> in this area. And, and so it's not uh, uh, surprising that, that they are ubiquitous and uh, arise in many fields, robotics, smart grid, unmanned aerial vehicles. And, and as well as video games and uh, mobile sensor networks that can be formulated using multi-agent dynamical systems and distributed optimization problems uh, when you have topological and informational constraints where each node is a separate sort of a computer and, and could be viewed as agents. And then the social networks, evolution of opinions and that also could be formalized in the framework of multi-agent systems. For example, talking about opinion dynamics, and this will be uh, in the latter part of my, my talk, uh, you can have nodes which represent opinions held by different agents, and, uh, and you can define neighborhoods. So these are not necessarily geographical neighborhoods. They are neighborhoods in terms of whose opinion is close to whose opinion to start with. 
and, uh, and they uh, interact with their neighbors and then receive uh, information on their opinions on one or multiple topics and update their opinions. They update them either in line with others, and that leads to consensus, or they maintain a certain distance with others, and that leads to dissensus. So, so I'm going to, in the, in the latter part of the talk, I'm going to uh, formulate a problem which, where both consensus and dissensus are accommodated. So, Again, the, coming back to multi-agent dynamical systems, you can have centralized protocols or decentralized protocols, but since you have a, a large number of agents, centralized is not the way to go, and decentralized protocols are really what one should uh, tr aim at. Uh, first of all, the central controller may not exist or may not be desirable because of vulnerability. There are advantages of decentralization because it's resilient to attacks. It's scalable. You can scale it up uh, with the number of agents. It's uh, privacy preserving. Agents do not have to share their sort of private information, for example, their utility functions and so on. And uh, you use only local information. And so, uh, and this, these advantages of decentralization also brings along, or these advantages bring along several challenges because of the interactions of multiple agents under informational asymmetry and misalignment of objectives. Their objectives may not be the same. And also the need arises for, uh, to learn for performance improvement uh, in a generally non-stationary environment and uh, uh, using, for example, the machinery of reinforcement learning. And I have listed a few papers that we have published, some of them survey papers, and, and, and those of you who know uh, Kai Ching, Zhang, he was a student of mine, and then a postdoc here with Asu, and, and he was the lead author on all of these. Now, as I said, an appropriate framework for a systematic study of such multi-agent dynamical systems in an uncertain environment with informational as well as possibly resource constraints and also with robustness built in uh, and, and with uh, different objectives for the, for the agents, uh, the framework is one of stochastic non-cooperative dynamic game theory. And, uh, so the game theory actually provides the right modeling and computational framework that captures interactions between uh, uh, multiple interacting agents or players or actors. I'll, I'll use these interchangeably. And uh, they could be physical, they could be economic agents, they could be social agents and even biological agents. And, and with possibly misaligned objectives. And, and th that could lead to zero sum when the objectives are, are totally conflicting or non-zero sum. And or something in between that, that if you have multiple agents, some of them could be playing a zero sum game, some of them could be playing a non-zero sum game. Now, going from game theory, the static game theory to dynamic game theory, we have a much richer framework and, uh, and that captures the evolution of these interactions over time and the uh, information structure becomes an important element of these formulations. Uh, who knows what and when. The memory restrictions that the players have. How deep into the past uh, do agents recall? And, and is that common information or not? I mean, I, some of the agents may have uh, uh, better uh, capacity to uh, computational capacity or, or memory capacity that they could go further back in the history. Others may not be able to. But, but definitely there are memory restrictions. And then there are resource constraints and the allocation of resources over time is an important uh, issue. And then there is trade-off uh, uh, between short-term and long-term goals. And all these play important roles. And uh, 
so coming to the to the third bullet here, uh, there are multiple solution concepts uh, for games, uh, particularly dynamic games. There is the Nash equilibrium, Stackelberg equilibrium. If you are looking for equilibria, or Markov perfect equilibrium, and 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 several others, and and these are all tailored to the scenario at hand and the roles of different players in the decision making process, whether you have asymmetric roles by the players or whether hierarchical roles, and that's the Stackelberg, uh, and so on. And, uh, and if you have an infinite population of players, then the interactions among players take a different meaning, and that leads to uh, mean field games. And that's, that's, I'm going to uh, focus on that uh, in this talk. And the associated solution concept, as I said in the outline, is, is mean field equilibrium. And, and we'll see where the uh, mean field game structure comes in as a convenient framework, even if you are dealing with finite number of players in the problem. So, so let me uh, discuss a little bit uh, just uh, what a general uh, dynamic game, stochastic dynamic game structure would be. Uh, so there is definitely a state equation and the state equation, state dynamics for each player. So, so here I have xi uh, t, this is the ith player. So, so we have a finite number of players, uh, n players. And this is the ith players uh, at time t, state, ith players action at time t. And then another term which includes uh, maybe not all states of other players, but of some of them. And, uh, and also the actions of the other players. And then you have a, you have a noise, driving noise. So, uh, so there is an underlying network generally that governs the connections or the neighborhood interactions uh, for uh, each player. And, 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 the, and the C sub i here uh, has dependence on x and u only in that neighborhood, which, which I'm going to denote by a script n sub i, t, uh, because the neighborhoods could change over time. So, uh, for example, you could have the, the c here, which couples, essentially, if c were zero, then there wouldn't be, each agent would have a, would have a separate independent state dynamics. But, but if c i is not zero, then there is some coupling, either through the states of other agents or through the controls. So, so uh, you could have, uh, for example, the, uh, the coupling could be only with the states and controls of other agents in the neighborhood of agent I, or it could be, or the, it could be more specific, and the coupling, and that will take us to mean field games, uh, could be the uh, sort of the average of the states of all other agents in that neighborhood. And uh, so uh, I said information structures play an important role in, in dynamic games. And, and uh, some of the possible information structures are close to perfect state. Each agent uh, measures, of course this is not scalable, uh, measures the state of all the agents at any point in time. And then going back in memory, so this, this, this really puts a load on the memory as well as it's not scalable. So it's not desirable in, in these problems. There is partial local state measurements uh, where each agent has access to his own uh, state only and, and then observes it over time. And then so there is again no memory restriction there. But you could also place some memory restrictions there. And then there is measurement feedback where each agent uh, uh, has a noise through a channel, has access to the, uh, its own state as well as to states of some of the other agents. So, so once you define the information structure, then, then you, uh, that leads to a policy space, uh, gamma sub i, let's say for player i. And that also, the, the choice of the policy space also reflects the action and communication constraints 
of the players, such as quantization, for example, if there is a quantization in the actions, the frequency of interactions between agents or the agent with the network, and, uh, and also disruptions due to intermittent failure of channels. And uh, so this information, for example, partial local state information may not be available all the time. And, uh, so, and then there is the loss function, of course, uh, which uh, determines the performance that an agent will uh, have uh, based on the, uh, its own actions as well as on the actions of other agents and, uh, and depends on the states of other agents as well. And so you take the expectation over this, over the time interval uh, with, the, uh, with the policies of the agents uh, which are obtained according to the underlying information structure. And so that leads to the f normal form of the game. So the equilibrium, uh, Nash or Stackelberg, is defined uh, in terms of the uh, normal form of the game. And the Nash equilibrium is, is one where no player has any uh, advantage uh, if it deviates from that equilibrium. And, uh, and also uh, there is, as, as we'll see, Shortly, you, you do not always have Nash equilibrium, but then you have to be uh, sort of uh, uh, satisfied with an approximate uh, equilibrium, which is called an epsilon Nash equilibrium. So you can, every player would, would go with an epsilon of the optimality. And, uh, and now, if I have, I talked about Stackelberg games, and, and we can bring in an additional zeroth player, so I hit n players, a zeroth player, the state is x sub zero, the action is u sub zero, so these are all in red, and then a state equation for the zeroth player. And so this is the leader. The information structures are as before, including one for the zeroth player. And the loss functions are, again, as I had earlier, and the horizon could be infinite. And, uh, and CIT and, and G KIT, uh, in this case, would uh, uh, respect the underlying network topology uh, here, the, the K here and the CI, who connects to whom and, and, and how, how strong that, that connection is. And so you take expectations again over the, these loss functions, and the Stackelberg equilibrium is one where uh, the player, the, the zeroth player, uh, anticipates the reactions of the, of the followers who are playing a Nash game among themselves, and then on that reaction set, optimizes his own, his own performance. And, but, but the reaction set is not always a, 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 a singleton, and in that case, to play a conservative game, then you minimize over the supremum, over that reaction set. Now, there are papers in the, in the literature where they go for the optimistic uh, sort of uh, uh, mode and, uh, and where instead of soup, you can use the inf. I mean, I generally uh, prefer the pessimistic approach because the leader has no control over, the, over the, uh, what the followers are going to pick if there is a non-unique Nash equilibrium among them. So what are the challenges in deriving Nash equilibrium and, and, and Stackelberg equilibrium? We have an almost complete theory for Nash equilibrium when there's closed loop information. That is, the players uh, share all their state information, the perfect state information for all players. And, and there is a recursive computation in the spirit of dynamic programming. And, uh, and also under open loop information, you can use maximum principle and still obtain at least the necessary and sufficient conditions in some cases for existence of Nash equilibrium. Now, for the Stackelberg equilibrium, when the leader has open loop information, which means if the poli what that means is the policy of the, of the leader does not have the states of the other players or the actions through the states, the actions of the other players. So it's, it's an open loop uh, information structure. And the followers could play either closed loop perfect state or open loop. And, uh, and, uh, and, and this is not a challenging problem. 
and there are necessary and sufficient conditions one can obtain for general games. But, uh, but when the leader has closed the perfect state information, or any information which has, which carries information on the actions of other players, then this is an extremely difficult problem. And no direct approach, as far as I know, would be applicable because you don't know what the structure of the leader's policy uh, is going to be. But there is an indirect approach uh, which has connections to mechanism design or incentive design. And that's feasible and that has been shown, I think, the, uh, way back in the, in the 19, early 1980s, I uh, showed what sort of an approach could be taken to this, uh, which I have referenced here. And under other types of dynamic information structures like local state, decentralized, or measurement feedback, uh, these are extremely challenging problems, both Nash equilibria as well as Stackelberg equilibria. And, and possibly the, the uh, policies, even if Nash equilibrium exists, are infinite dimensional. Uh, and, uh, and even in linear quadratic games, that's the case with uh, asymmetric information or unknown information. Now, why is this the case? So here we are in the third bullet, uh, because of strategic interactions. If, uh, if, if my information uh, carries uh, information on the actions of other players and those actions built on the information that they have. And if that information is helpful to me, if I had known it, then I'll try to guess what sort of an information based on which those actions were taken. And that leads to what's known as a second guessing phenomenon. And, uh, and second, uh, if one player is doing second guessing, the other player would also be doing second guessing. And then you would have do second guessing on the other player's second guessing of yourself, of your information. So that leads to an infinite recursion. And, uh, and, and uh, whether it uh, converges or not is an open problem in the most general case. And uh, so, so essentially this involves asymptotically learning relevant information through a direct measurement of others' actions or through their impact on the state of performance. And even obtaining approximate Nash equilibrium is a formidable task in these cases. So is there any way we can overcome this challenge? And uh, uh, particularly multi-agent systems where we have a relatively large number of agents with different individual local objectives, and they all have, they have access to only their local information, any direct approach has that difficulty of second guessing. And uh, uh, so the question is, how can we overcome this? Well, as I hinted at the beginning, this is the mean field games approach. So you lift the n-player game, assuming that you have a sufficiently large number of players, which in many applications that actually turns out to be the case. You lift the n-player game up to an appropriate infinite population game, assuming that one exists. And in many circumstances, scenarios, one can prove that that exists. And, and you could even have multiple populations, as I indicated in the consensus dissensus problem at the beginning, you can have multiple uh, neighborhoods uh, arising and they are farther away from each other. So you can view that as multiple populations. Each population has an infinite number of players. And, and so this also has to respect neighborhood relationships. Now, if that's the case, each player is an, is an atom. So, so what that means is that any deviation of a player from an equilibrium or from any strategy does not affect the, what's called the mean field itself. And because, because each player's influence on that aggregate quantity is infinitesimal. So, so therefore, each generic player in this case uh, faces a stochastic control problem. So you have turned the game into a stochastic <coughs> control problem and uh, confronting a, a subpopulation, 
if, if the agent is in a, in a particular population. And that uh, a, a exogenous process is uh, from infinitesimal contributions of other players. And it, does, it is not affected by the agent's own actions. So the main reason why with finite uh, player games, obtaining Nash equilibria under asymmetric information is, is very challenging is because the agent's optimization problem affects the, uh, uh, what uh, other players are doing and, and vice versa. And, and in the case of this, this infinite uh, uh, population game, uh, that does not happen. So, so let me be a bit more specific. For example, if we have the local state dynamics in this way, where C sub I, the coupling between different, uh, uh, between the i-th player and the others in the neighborhood of the out player, and i t, is through the uh, average of the states. And, uh, and, and here I'm assuming that the uh, cardinality of NIT is, is infinite, is, is very large. So in the loss function of the players, again the GIT here could have a similar structure. The, the, in GIT, the KIT, which brings in coupling, if KIT were zero, then there wouldn't be any, any, any issue. But there is a coupling from the rest of the players in the population, but that coupling enters into the loss function of the ith player only through the average of xi's. Now you can also add here, I have as a specific example, the, uh, the average of the, of the states of other players within the population, but you can also have the average of the actions of other players in the population. Uh, the same arguments would go. So, so the CIT and KIT in this case are stochastic processes which are exogenous to an agent or a player. So, so what you have, what each player is faced with is one where C here is an exogenous stochastic process which is not affected by the choice of the UITs. And, and also the, the KIT also again the same way here. And uh, so uh, I discussed the, uh, the first uh, uh, two bullets. So the, the next thing you do, you, you generate the state process. Question yes, you yes, sure. I just, sure. I uh, did not understand how you actually get the tractability by just moving to mean field games because, I mean, for large. Uh, Well, this is the this is the this is the additional structure that the CIT, which is the coupling here, is through the average of the states, and the, uh, or in your neighborhood. But this is an infinite neighborhood, and so so the average of the states in a different neighborhood. Uh, but, but in the finite case, you do have uh, this neighborhood. There is an interaction with the neighborhood, and the players are not infinitesimal. So therefore, their actions would affect the neighborhood itself, what happens in the neighborhood. Whereas in this case, as, as I take this to infinity, then what a particular agent does does not affect the agents are atomic, does not affect what happens here, and, and, and so therefore this is an, you can show that this is an exogenous, one can prove that this is an exogenous process which is independent of the actions of the, of the i player. And so, so you, you generate the state process and other possible aggregate quantities under these, so, so each agent solves an optimal control problem which is driven by, the, uh, by this exogenous process. State is driven and the 
exogenous process also enters into the into the loss function, and uh, uh, so uh, so you you obtain uh, uh, the solution, and now you come back and and substitute that into the state process, and other uh, possible aggregate quantities you may have, and uh, and then you require some consistency in it because the mean field itself is generated by the uh, policies of individual agents who are atomic. And, and so therefore, you have to have a consistency and uh, the state of one agent has to be the, the equal to the average. And so therefore, that uh, entails a fixed point equation. And so, so you, from the fixed point equation, you obtain the mean field equilibrium. You obtain the mean field itself which corresponds to the solution here, as well as the optimum solutions policies of the individual players, of the individual agents, because you know what the mean field equilibrium is in that case. So schematically, uh, this is uh, what is happening. So let's say that uh, we have a single population with an exogenous process G. And uh, so you solve a stochastic control problem for a generic agent, and that leads to an optimal policy mu star, which depends on G. And now you use that policy in the state equation of the generic agent and find the G so that it's consistent with the emerging state process. And so therefore, that leads to an, an mean field equilibrium, which consists of a pair of policies and then the mean field itself mu star and g star. So, uh, so it is possible uh, to build a robustness into this whole derivation through a risk sensitive formulation, uh, this time working with the exponentiated loss function for the agents. And, uh, and, and we have shown that this also leads to uh, a an adversarial aspect to the, the robustness brings in an adversarial aspect to this formulation. The generic agent now faces, instead of solving a stochastic control problem, solves a stochastic zero-sum dynamic game. And, and we have introduced that actually in, in uh, this transactions on automatic control paper 2014 and then several others uh, more recently in the, in the more uh, in 2020 for a, for a very general class of problems in discrete time. This one is in continuous time. So, so th now, now that we have obtained the mean field equilibrium, then the question is, uh, how good is this if we have only a finite number of players? And, uh, and so, so we study the relationship between finite and and the infinite n solutions, and that leads to an epsilon Nash equilibrium. Of course, the, the n cannot be too small, and then uh, generally our uh, sort of bound on this epsilon is like one over square root of n. And uh, so, so this way, it's possible to solve a, a, a finite game with sufficiently large number of uh, players uh, with asymmetric information, that's in this case only local measurements, using only local measurements. Even if the players have other measurements, they are not uh, uh, relevant to this case because the stochastic control problem that, that each generic agent solves uh, uses only, has to use only his local information because the other's uh, information is not relevant. And, uh, and so we can show that uh, epsilon goes to zero and goes to infinity. And as I said, in many problems, it's in the, in the order of one over square root of n. And uh, so you can do the same thing for Stackelberg problems. Now the Stackelberg leader is, uh, faces an infinite population of followers. And for each policy of the Stackelberg leader, the followers play a mean field Nash game as before. 
and, and, and this generates the Nash reaction set. So again, this is a game which you cannot otherwise solve because here you're assuming an infinite number of followers. And then the, the leader comes back and optimizes his expected cost on that reaction set, uh, either the supremum or the, or the, the infimum. And, uh, and this in turn leads to followers corresponding policies and the exogenous process at the followers level. And, and this again leads to a mean field equilibrium, which now has the leader's policy as well as the followers policy. Now, in this case, we have two parameters. One is the approximation. If we bring it down to the approximate sort of uh, finite number of players, there are, there are two epsilons here. Uh, one is the performance loss of the leader. The other one is the performance loss of the, of the Nash followers. And, uh, and, and we can again show that uh, uh, both epsilons go to zero as n goes to infinity, so you have continuity uh, in the in the limits. So this has been discussed in this in this automatica paper 2018. Now, the question is: this is this is fine as as a theory, but the question is: how do we um, uh, compute the solution? What are the computational aspects? First of all, the mean field equilibrium. Uh, based approximate Nash equilibrium policy is scalable, uh, as we have seen. And then computation uh, of the mean field Nash equilibrium requires the solution of a fixed point equation, which requires full modeling knowledge. And one way around this is for each agent to interact with a central coordinator or simulator who collects state values, so this also preserves privacy who collects the state values and or policies of the individual agents, computes the mean field, and then broadcasts it to all the agents. The mean field, the mean field since it, it is the uh, average of the states of all agents, it doesn't have, you cannot have any leakage of privacy. And, and the agents are stochastic uh, controllers and they update their policies based on the received mean field. So you have an update on the mean field, and then for each mean field, you solve exactly the stochastic control problem. And, and we have shown that this actually converges. So, so, so Mary, yes. On the, on the computation, uh, so I guess, you know, like, uh, even from the centralized planner, this can be a hard problem. Is, is there some, like, contractive map here on the line? That's, that's that's an uh, that's an excellent excellent question. Uh, this is this is one way of doing it, but we have a very recent paper where we show that this all can be done at the individual uh, agent level without introducing an oracle. Now, some problems have uh, contraction properties, the fixed point, but others do not. And so we have a way of modifying it into one where the fixed point iteration actually converges. But, but we have another, I'm not going to discuss it here, another uh, uh, approach where all the computation, private computation, is done at the local agent's level. The agent, agent himself generates, because he receives reward, and based on that he, he generates his own policies. If there is a, a, the way the way we the way we prove uh, uh, uniqueness uh, in some uh, problems, we prove uniqueness, and it's either based on contraction or other arguments. And uh, but but definitely there is uniqueness but, in but this. I guess No, not in the in the in the general discrete discrete time very general game. Uh, we showed that there exists a, a fixed point uh, there, but this is one of the mean field equilibria, and and there was no claim of uniqueness there. With that generality, you cannot say anything. But for linear quadratic problems, we do have uniqueness. So, so, so this, is, uh, this is how the interaction 
is uh, this is a single population schematic. A generic agent interacts with the simulator in this case and the environment and, and feeding policy and or state values. The S, the, the, the simulator, computes the mean field and then it feeds it to the, the environment and, and, the, and the cost or reward of A is generated and sent to A and then the A does a policy update on this. So now this is, this is fine if you know, uh, if all the agents know their own models, but if they don't know their own models, then you bring in uh, reinforcement learning for each agent into the iterative learning process. Uh, in that case, you parameterize the policies and optimize over the parameters using, for example, policy gradient, respecting also the computation and communication constraints. And uh, when explicit form of the agent's objective function is not available and its gradient then can be computed only approximately using, using zero order stochastic optimization. And, and, and then the next step is to uh, study uh, finite sample guarantees for the underlying algorithms, which we have done for a specific class of problems, games. Okay, so here is the illustration. I have, uh, uh, since I started late, maybe I have about 10 minutes. Uh, so here is uh, what I uh, uh, indicated as one application uh, in, in a social networks framework. So, uh, so here you have multiple types of populations of agents where the like ones want to stay close to each other. So view these as like ones with infinite or very large uh, population in each case. And they are sort of connected to others which may not share their opinions. So, so, so we, are, we want to have consensus within each population, but we want to have dissensus within uh, across populations. So how can we accommodate or capture both consensus and dissensus within a single large-scale decision-making uh, formulation? The answer is, again, a game theoretic formulation. By building into the objective functions of different agents, their preferences and attitudes toward others in different populations. So. Uh, this is the uh, paper. I won't be able to cover everything in that paper because there is learning. I, I mean, I have the slides, but I don't think we'll, we'll have the time. Uh, and uh, so this appeared in 2023, which, which analyzes the existence and uniqueness of mean field equilibria. And I'll introduce the, the loss functions shortly, which will capture this scenario. And then the, also the, the, the zero order stochastic optimization, the error coming from there, sample complexity, so it's all, it's all discussed in this, in this paper. So, uh, so what, what do we have here is that I'm not going to have the single population case. I'm going to skip all this and then go to the multi-population game. So this is linear quadratic. Each agent has linear uncoupled dynamics in this case. The coupling is only in, as in all consensus problems. I mean, you develop your opinions according to some evolving state, but then, but then you have uh, uh, coupling with, other, with opinions of others uh, through uh, uh, a cost function. So, so each agent has access only to local state and action, but has full memory, but doesn't have to use the full memory. Uh, agents have coupled cost functions with neighboring populations. So this is the regulation term. So each agent wants, let's concentrate on agent N. Uh, we have L populations. Agent N uh, in, in one of the populations, they uh, wants to regulate Z to zero and wants to use as small uh, uh, effort as possible. And then the, the next uh, is interpopulation consensus. Each agent wants his state within the population to be as close to the average states 
of other agents within that population. And then the interpopulation consensus or the census is, is one where there is a positive term beta. So each agent in one population wants to be at a distance beta, and beta could change across populations, from the average states of other agents in other populations. So, so this is the uh, one which, which accommodates both consensus and dissensus. And, uh, and so you go to the uh, multi-agent uh, mean field game framework. A generic agent in, a, in, a, in the population has a certain system dynamics where W is an independent Gaussian noise. And again, you have regulation. So, so here, the thing is, if you have multiple populations, you have multiple but a finite number of mean fields. So one for each population, and that's why Z bar, which is the mean field, is, is a vector in this case uh, of uh, Z1 through ZL. So these are the ZL is the, is the mean field of the health population. And so, uh, so the mean field game is defined as one where an agent uh, in the health population, a generic agent, wants to regulate, wants to the interpopulation consensus, wants to be as close to the mean field of that population, but also wants to be, stay at a distance from the population of, of another agent, and that distance being beta. So, so we can show that for this problem, so, so you saw each agent, given the, given the, uh, the mean field, uh, in each population, given the mean field vector, solves a stochastic control problem, and that's, uh, that's uh, uh, actually an LQG problem uh, with uh, a drift. And, uh, and so you have the optimality, so you, you obtain this solution for each, and this is unique, uh, for each uh, mean field vector. And then you substitute this into the uh, state equation, the mean field equation for, the, uh, for each agent, for each generic agent, and generate this mean field equation. So what we can show is that there is a unique fixed point of these maps. So the, so, and then there is a unique uh, mean field equilibrium. Phi star, these are the policies of, of the agents, and there are L different policies because the agents within each population are indistinguishable, but across populations they are distinguishable, and the, and the uh, L-dimensional Z. And uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, if, if we have controllability and observability, then, then we have existence and uniqueness. So, so when I said we have uniqueness to the fixed point, it's under these two conditions which are reasonable. And, uh, and, and, the, and there's an explicit form for the uh, solution, uh, linear, linear in the state for each agent in a population. It's linear in the state of that agent, local state. It's, it's linear in the mean fields of all the populations. And then there is a, a constant term here, a bias term. And the reason why we have this is because of the beta because you want to stay, if you had pure consensus, then this would not happen, <coughs> be here. And then the, the, the mean field itself is, it's non-stationary actually, uh, is uh, 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 driven by, uh, it's a linear equation, but driven by C star. And again, C star depends on beta. If beta had been zero, then the C star would be, would be zero. So, so these are the, impacts of the, the presence of these are the impacts of the, uh, this multi-population and uh, both consensus and dissensus framework. So, so these are the linear terms. Is that uh, uh, for spectral radius one or something? For what? F star. I mean, oh, F star, F star is, is uh, yes, yes, okay. it is, it is a stable system, right. And then the and then the and then you have these are the linear terms, and then you have the uh, offset terms. Okay, 
And uh, so the question is, what about the epsilon Nash curve? I have the solution, assuming that you have full knowledge. Now we have worked out the, the one with, with learning. I may not have time, so there's just one slide at the end. Uh, so uh, what happens if each population has a finite number of agents, n sub L, for the L population? If I use the, the result obtained from the mean field uh, game here, what would be the error? So I talked about errors in the, in the, uh, in the order of uh, 1 over square root of n in the general case. But in this case, the error is in the order of 1 over square root of the size of the smallest population. So, but, but all agents are affected by that, the Nash equilibrium of everyone. Okay, so, so if, all, if all populations are of the same size, then, then this would be just a single quantity. Otherwise, you go to the... To the if one population is, is, has only two agents, uh, then, then this is not a good approximation. And uh, so we, we do an RL on this, so let me just tell you how... What are the unknown quantities here? The unknown quantities are... Uh, our F, we have to find what F is. Uh, C, we have to find what C is. And, uh, and, and also uh, the, the A, we don't know the, the models, and then the Bs. And, uh, and, and so therefore you have to use reinforcement learning uh, to learn this by, and, and essentially the reward function for the L agent can be written in this form. And, uh, and I, I don't have time to go uh, into this. So you are learning. You, c you can assume that you have, not assume, but this is, we already know that there is a linear solution. Linear solution in X. X has both Z and Z bar, the mean field. And then this, this is the offset term. And so you have, to, you have to learn, identify these terms. Now, what we can show is that uh, linear and offset terms can be learned in a decoupled uh, manner and independently in this case. And, uh, and certain conditions uh, that are desirable here are satisfied. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's, I'm not, I mean, we have the <coughs> sample complexity results and the, and the zero order stochastic optimization, the error coming from there. And, and fairly, uh, uh, you can see some of the uh, 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 sort of finite sample guarantees for the offset term as well as for the main term. Fairly complicated, but, but they are all within reasonable limits. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, there's a numerical, and so I'm going to conclude. Uh, so, I, again, I want to stress the point that mean field game framework provides a quite a versatile setting for addressing some complex decision-making problems in multi-agent systems. And there are several fruitful research opportunities uh, 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 for the future. Uh, one can bring in robustness to risk-sensitive objective functions, which I said we have done it for mean field games, but, but not within the learning context. Uh, what if the each generic agent does not have perfect state measurement, but imperfect state measurement, then you have to solve some sort of a user Kalman filtering. So there are two states then you have to deal with. And uh, one important thing is the, the populations could change over time. They are not fixed in advance, but they are formed uh, through clustering mechanisms. How can one modify these algorithms? And another, uh, in fact, uh, question, and which, which actually arises in, in many uh, contexts as well, not only in this context, what if the uh, agents do not obey the rules of the algorithm that, that we assume that they do? What about irrational behavior or stubbornness? How can that be detected and what to do about it? And uh, hierarchical decision structures is another one where one can incentivize agents toward truthful revelation or toward uh, rational behavior. 
and and also the more general nonlinear models. I mean, I have here described a, a general approach to these problems, but applied it to a specific linear quadratic uh, Gaussian uh, game with multiple populations. What if we have nonlinear dynamics and so on? So I'll stop here. Thank you. Any quick question, John? It's quick. Well, whatever. Yeah, I have all the time. Yes. <laughs> the babies are, are, are they? Are, how how do these enter the model? Are they learn? Who? The beta parameters. Oh, the beta parameters are is part of the. Uh, 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 they are uh, here. They are. Uh, learned because each each player knows his own beta, each population, but not the other population's betas. So that's learned from the from the attitude that comes from them. So, so a philosophical question. Yes. So, um, so there seems to be that the way you apply this, you apply it in a case where you have some sort of separation of scales in the sense that in each of this, in the example, for example, right? right? You can do mean field approximation in each state or whatever, right, each of right. the cities or something, but the global graph is small, or relatively small and fixed. Is that correct? Each, so within, so within each, each yeah. neighborhood, right. each neighborhood is, is large. Well, it's large inside the nodes. Inside the nodes. But, inside, inside, the, 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 but, the, but the, the yes, you have only a finite number of them, yes. So, so Okay, so that's really what I wanted to understand. Okay. So it has to be like this. Oh, there has to be that separation, right. yes. Otherwise, otherwise, these results would not hold because right. you have to have a finite number of populations. Well, but you could think of something like a partial differential equation. Yeah. The then, then I have to take another mean field with respect right. to the, right. because I cannot, I cannot add the contributions of the other populations into this cost function. Yeah.